On behalf of the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet and the Lexington Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, I'd like to welcome you to this hybrid public meeting for the Jessamine Fayette Connectivity Study. My name is Brian Aldridge, and I am the Project Manager for Stantec Consulting Services. For those of you that are joining us in person this evening, you may recognize that I'm not actually at the meeting. Uh, unfortunately, I've had a COVID exposure in my family, and out of an abundance of caution, study team has decided that it's in everyone's best interest if I remain virtual and present from my home this evening. We've got a number of discussion topics we would like to uh, go over through the course of this presentation this evening. And the purpose of this presentation is really to give you an overview of the Jessamine Fayette Connectivity Study. I'll introduce the study team. We'll talk about some of the study goals and objectives, talk about feedback that you provided that has been instrumental in, in informing the study team and in helping us develop conceptual transportation improvements that we'll talk about over the course of the study. All of the materials that I'm gonna show over the course of this presentation are also on display in the meeting room this evening. In addition to that, they're also all available on the project website, justfaystudy.com. With us this evening in person at the meeting, we've got a number of representatives from two agencies, the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet. We've got staff here from both the Central Office Division of Planning, as well as the District 7 office in Lexington. We also have representatives from the Lexington Area Metropolitan Planning Organization. Stantec and Razor Communications are consulting partners working alongside the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet and the Lexington Area MPO in performing Jessamine Fayette Connectivity Study. So it's important to realize that this is a planning study. So the, all the information that we're sharing is absolutely conceptual. So we need your input. The ideas that are on display that are on the website are just that, they're ideas. We need your thoughts, we need your input to help us determine, are these the right ideas? Are there ways that we can improve those ideas? We need your input and the best way that you can provide that is if you're attending in person is to fill out one of the survey forms that was provided at the sign-in table. If you're not in person and you're joining us virtually, you can also fill out that survey form by going to the justfacestudy.com website or you can also send us emails at the info at justfacestudy.com email address. Our study area, uh, primarily our area of focus for any type of, of, of looking at issues and looking at the need for improvements, essentially is bounded by Nicholasville Road on the west, by I-75 on the east, uh, certainly south of Manowar on the north. And as you can see, we are clearly north of the Kentucky River on the south side. You may be familiar with a previous effort where the, the transportation cabinet was looking at a project that uh, would, would have constructed a roadway to the south that would connect Nicholasville and I-75. This study area is not anywhere near where the, that project was previously proposed. And that project is no longer in the highway plan, nor is it in the Lexington area MPO's Metropolitan Transportation Plan. So for all practical purposes, that is not an active project any longer. I've already mentioned the fact that obviously this is a planning study. And one of the things that we do in a planning study is, is beginning by trying to determine what are the issues, what are the items of interest to the public that need to be addressed uh, by the study. So over the course of last fall, uh, we had a very concerted public engagement effort, we'll talk about in just a moment, where you helped us identify issues related to safety, to congestion, and to connectivity, meaning what can we do to improve connections between existing transportation facilities. Uh, we have taken all that information, including our own internal technical analyses, and we've looked at the need and the possibility of implementing concepts, transportation improvement concepts, to help address those issues. Uh, some of these could be considered short term, some long term, and in some cases we're even looking at opportunities to improve some local roads. The next couple of exhibits, again, these are on display around the room, uh, but also available on the study website. We're just going to show some of the existing conditions and some of the items that have helped, again, inform our process. The first one is showing crash history over the last or over the five year period between 2015 and 2019. 
what we're showing are excess expected crashes. So we compare the actual crash occurrence on every segment of roadway to what it uh, would compare to against similar roadways elsewhere in Kentucky. So similar traffic volumes and similar, similar roadway characteristics. And as you might expect from the color coding, orange and red tend to show something that's bad, right? So those are locations that have more crashes that have occurred than would have been expected based on that type of roadway elsewhere in Kentucky. So those clearly are locations of interest to us. Is there something that we can do to improve safety to reduce that crash frequency? The next exhibit is gonna show the existing traffic volumes and our currently projected traffic volumes, assuming we don't do anything. So what we call our no build alternative. This does include some transportation improvements, which are already committed, such as the East Nicholasville bypass that you see down at the lower left of that exhibit. The general takeaway here, if you can look at the, the blue numbers, those are today's traffic volumes, generally talking pre-pandemic numbers, and the red numbers are showing uh, the 2045 projections, assuming we build no improvements. The, the key, uh, key or most important takeaway, I believe, is the fact that in each case, you see pretty significant growth on all of the study area roadways moving forward. So what's important about that is that we realize we've got a lot of traffic out there that is using roadways that were not designed to accommodate the level or type of traffic that they're carrying today. If you think that's an issue today, it absolutely is going to be worsened in the future as traffic volumes increase on those existing roadways. The next few slides, we're gonna recap some of the public feedback results that we received over the course of last fall. And again, our primary tool, while we use a number of different ways of trying to reach out to the public, the primary tool really was focusing on our project website. We had an online story map, an online survey, and we also had an online mapping exercise. And so we'll talk about some of the responses that we received from you last fall. And again, for everyone that responded to the survey, thank you so much. That information has been very helpful to the study team. The first exhibit, again, on display in the room this evening is gonna show the results of our online mapping exercise. We asked a fairly open-ended question, where do you see the issues in the study area and what are those issues? We've tried to compile and aggregate those responses and color coded them on this graphic based on the general category of response received. So we've got things related to congestion, related to safety, related to the roadway characteristics themselves. And what the key takeaway here is, look at where the clusters of comments were received. Uh, over the course of that, that couple month period, again, hundreds of responses were, were entered into the, our, this mapping exercise and you can very clearly see clear clusters of where responses were entered. So for example, uh, Tate's Creek Road to the north in the vicinity of the Long Road is a cluster, along Ash Grove Road. Uh, on Tate's Creek, again, just north of the Spears area, we see a number of responses that were entered, even along Jack's Creek Pike to the east. So these types of, uh, uh, this type of input has been, again, very helpful in us for us to look at the need for improvement. We also asked questions through the survey about just what do you see as being the most critical issues affecting transportation within the study area? Now, if you just wanna look at the highest priority, those three responses came out to be increasing levels of congestion, narrow travel lanes and shoulders, and too much traffic using local roadways like, like we just talked about. We also asked a basic question, do you think transportation improvements are needed? Are they needed now? Are they needed in the future? 76% of all the survey responses that were received said improvements are needed today. And based on what we're gonna show a little bit later, I tend to agree with that sentiment. So let's talk about the preliminary improvement concepts. And I'm gonna provide a few caveats in just a moment about those. But before we do that, would like to talk about some of the current uh, pro programmed or committed projects that are, that are underway, or at least at some phase in the project development cycle. First is Nicholasville Road. Uh, many of you are aware that there was an access management study performed several years ago. And as a component of that study, there's a, going to be an active design project ramping up here very quickly. that's examining uh, the section primarily from Brandon Road up to Man of War. 
looking at intersection improvements and uh, as well as looking at some widening options there to try to reduce, reduce congestion, improve safety. There's also a current project on Ashgrove Road, just on the east side of, of Nicholsville Road, currently in the right-of-way phase that's gonna be implementing a minor widening uh, increasing the lane widths and, and providing some more usable shoulders along that stretch of roadway. This is something uh, akin to what is proposed along uh, that sec section of, of Ashgrove. And um, this is also the type of improvement that we are currently considering for our four what we call corridor concepts that I'll go through in just a moment. So regardless of what you may have heard or what you may fear, uh, I've heard some comments that there's, there's some concern about us building some sort of expressway, uh, and, and really that's not what's really under consideration at all. Um, because we are looking at multiple corridors, we, we think we can spread traffic around sufficiently like it does today uh, and, and provide opportunities along some of the existing roadways to improve safety and make that travel just a little bit more efficient. So what we're proposing with each of these concepts at this time is two travel lanes with improved shoulders. So we're not talking about major widening, we're talking about making a better driving experience that better meets driver expectation and provides a safer travel opportunity. I'm gonna go through each one of these in just a moment, but we've got basically four what we call corridor level improvement concepts. And these build upon one another. So we have ordered them concept one through concept four, based generally upon the order we think they should be implemented within. So concept one is really based on today's needs, whereas concept four is really more of a forward-looking project that we see being necessary to respond to future land uses. These can also be built in segments in some cases. You know, corridor one or concept one in particular. Uh, is definitely an option that could be constructed in phases and in built in pieces. Uh, but again, these do build upon one another. So as we go through these in, in order, we'll talk about how that, how that occurs. So as I've mentioned previously, I just wanna say this one more time before we get into this. Uh, these are simply ideas. Uh, at this point, uh, no decisions have been made, no recommendations are on the table. So these are purely ideas for your input. If you like the general concept, if you think we should improve a particular stretch of roadway or maybe build a, a new connection somewhere, let us know that. If, if, you just, if it's just that you don't really like the way we're showing something, but you like the general premise, please say that. We need that level of input. Again, these concepts do build upon one another and they do help in the future uh, reduce traffic congestion along all of the study area roadways. As we've already talked about in some cases, especially with concept one, it can be implemented within segments. The first couple of concepts are really focusing on uh, improvements that are going to affect east-west mobility. So concept one focusing primarily on 169 and Jacks Creek Pike, and then concept two takes advantage of those improvements. So concept one, what we're looking at is taking advantage of the uh, construction that's proposed for the Eastern uh, or the East Nicholasville bypass. When, we, when that opens a traffic, we absolutely realize that it's going to increase traffic on, on Kentucky 169 Union Mill Road, and it's gonna affect travel patterns in the Northeastern portion of Nicholasville. But taking advantage of that, we can see in, uh, building an improved Kentucky 169 uh, from there uh, towards the uh, Ashgrove area, or excuse me, towards Cates Creek Road, improving locations that have severe horizontal curves, you know, just west of East Hickman Road. But again, proposing right now, what we're talking about is just that two lane improvement. So two wider lanes with, with improved shoulders. Now, once you get close to Spears on the east side of East Hickman, the terrain becomes more problematic. Uh, we've got sensitive environmental resources. There are historic resources of concern. So it's really infeasible to make significant safety improvements along that stretch of roadway and, and, and improving it in the vicinity of Spears. Therefore, this concept includes consideration for a realignment or a, re, or a new construction of a connector to the north. That connector would um, tie into Tate's Creek 
on the north side of Spears, and then ultimately connect into the south end of Crawley Lane. And then we would be looking at from there improvements like we're showing along 169, again, a minor two lane widening uh, along Crawley and along Jacks Creek Pike, ultimately providing a consistent two lane section with better sight distance and with usable shoulders between the East Nicholasville Bypass and Old Richmond Road. As shown here, this is about 10.6 miles in length and we think the construction cost estimate will be around $40 million. Building upon concept one, concept two looks at taking advantage of that new connection and improving the access to the interstate. Many of you last fall provided feedback to us about issues related to that exit 99 access just north of the Clays Ferry Bridge. Um, given that location, that, that grade on I-75 and the the unique geometry, if you will, of the existing interchange, trying to make improvements there are really kind of problematic. So rather than trying to improve that, that interchange at that location, this concept includes a new interchange roughly at milepost 101, so in the vicinity of the existing um, Old Richmond Road overpass, uh, and, and so you've got new access to the interstate. So this would require some realignment of uh, Old Richmond Road and the overpass in particular to make the interchange work, uh, including a total of about 2.2 miles of construction. Uh, we think that's about a $25 million improvement. So when these two are both constructed, we see them both providing a lot of benefit, giving access from Nicholasville to I-75 uh, within those existing corridors. We think that concept one at the west end would carry somewhere around 18,000 vehicles per day as a two lane section. Again, it's within the limits of what a two lane section can accommodate. And the new interchange would service somewhere around 13,000 vehicles per day. The next concept takes advantage of what we've showed, particularly with concept one and improves connectivity both north and south. This is gonna be looking at East Hickman Road and Tate's Creek Road. So concept three includes similar types of improvements along East Hickman Road, or Kentucky 1981, as it's shown on the exhibit there. Uh, so again, a two lane minor widening, providing better lanes and more usable shoulders. It also includes some realignment uh, on the south side of Chates Creek Road to address some of those really sharp horizontal curves in that vicinity. We're also looking at the possibility of teeing Tates Creek Road into East Hickman, and we'll show what that looks like in just a moment, as well as relocating the DeLong Road intersection to a more suitable location. For those of you that are familiar with the area, you know exactly where we are here. We're looking northbound on Tates Creek at the DeLong Road intersection. So this is a location where DeLong is on a relatively steep grade, Sight distance isn't the best, particularly if you're looking to the north. Uh, and then on Tates Creek itself, we're in a curve with uh, relatively narrow lanes and not much usable shoulder. Looking southbound from that same location, we see that horizontal curve, that 90 degree curve that's signed for 20 miles an hour. So East Hickman would be off to the left, just to the east on the other side of that curve. So this concept, again, uh, in addition to that minor widening along East Hickman, includes consideration for a realignment, a modest realignment that would help address those two, uh, the worst horizontal curves of the north end of East Hickman, uh, those that are signed for 25 miles an hour and 35 miles per hour. And we're just showing at this point a couple of ideas for how that could happen. Uh, the realignment doesn't have to be what either of these are showing. Uh, we could just do some minor curve widening even and make the situation quite a bit better. So again, if you like the idea, you just don't necessarily like the way we're showing it, please let us know that. As I mentioned, we're also considering teeing Tates Creek Road to the south into East Hickman and making East Hickman and Tates Creek to the north a through movement. And the reason for that is it looks like there's about twice as much traffic on East Hickman compared to that Tates Creek South volume. So about 3,200 vehicles per day on East Hickman versus only about 1,600 vehicles per day on Tates Creek South. So 
given that it looks like the majority of the traffic is obviously using East Hickman to get to Tate's Creek North, we think that makes some sense. It also helps eliminate that 90 degree curve we showed in the last photo. I mentioned the DeLong Road intersection. We're uh, suggesting with this concept, just a modest relocation of that intersection to the north in a more suitable location where you've got better side distance. And ultimately, this would include improving Tate's Creek up to the already improved section just south of Ethel Lane. I uh, should have mentioned that's about a $15.5 million improvement, about three and a half miles in total length. So those first three concepts, again, are really kind of looking at issues that are out there right now, whereas concept four is a little bit more forward looking, realizing that we don't know how things are going to change in terms of land use, but we, we do feel like they're going to change. Uh, as southeastern Fayette County continues to grow as in residential or whatever type of development that might be, we see an ultimate extension of Brandon Road as being a possible uh, need. So we've looked at a couple of different corridors that could be considered trying to minimize impacts to sensitive environmental resources, minimizing right-of-way impacts. And so the, the yellow band on this exhibit is really just a representative corridor. Ultimately, should an idea like that move forward, it really re needs to react to that future land use and however that changes. So trying to establish a corridor for that today is really kind of premature. But as we're showing it on this particular exhibit, that's about 4.2 miles in length. And to construct a two lane section, like we're showing for those other concepts in that particular corridor, would be somewhere around $33 million. We think that uh, on top of the other improvements shown, if you build something like that, it would carry somewhere around 10,000 vehicles per day in the future. So that, again, kind of uh, encapsulates those, those corridor improvements that we've, we've talked about as a study team. We'd love your input on each one of those. The next few exhibits are gonna show some spot improvements that are more focused on smaller uh, types of, uh, of improvement categories, whether they be intersections or looking at uh, a much smaller segment of roadway. We've got two intersection locations and two stretches of the long road that the study team have been examining. Now, the two spots on Old Richmond Road include the Jacks Creek Pike intersection and the DeLong Road intersection. And in both of those cases, we've, we've had quite a few crashes occur at both intersections. Uh, and given the fact that we realize that there's a high rate of speed along Old Richmond Road, we see opportunities to construct turn lanes. So right and left turn lanes at both intersections. I should also mention that in both of these cases, the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet's Highway Safety Improvement Program is also examining other types of intersection reconfigurations to help improve safety. So, you know, once that process is a little bit further down the road, they'll be sharing more details about the ideas that they're exploring. Now at the Jacks Creek Pike intersection, we also got a lot of feedback last fall about drainage concerns. Just to the south of this intersection, we realized that we have some drainage issues. Uh, we don't have the best ditches down there to help convey stormwater during heavy rainfall events. So any intersection improvements here should also look at those drainage issues to see if they can improve that situation. Similar to what we just showed at the Jacks Creek Pike intersection, again at DeLong, looking at a northbound left turn lane from Old Richmond Road and then a southbound right turn. Each of these would be about a half million dollar project to implement. Spot three is along DeLong, just to the west of Old Richmond Road. And the intent here would be to try to address those three sharp horizontal curves. The, Two at the east end are really 90 degree curves and the one at the west end is not, not quite as sharp, but still signed for 25 miles per hour. So what we're showing here, again, just a, a modest realignment. It doesn't necessarily have to look like what we're showing, but if you support uh, addressing these horizontal curves so that they're safer, not quite as sharp, that's the intent of this type of concept. We're also showing the crash history uh, throughout this section over that period between June uh, or July 1st of 2016 
June of 2019 for reference. And so you can kind of see where we've had property damage only or injury, or even, I don't think we've had any fatalities in this section, uh, but you can kind of get an idea of what's occurred in that period. That's about a three quarter of a mile uh, stretch of roadway as we were showing it. Spot four is about 1.6 miles. And so it's gonna start in the vicinity of Walnut Hill Road on the south and on the north around Colliver Lane. Again, four horizontal curves in this location and one narrow bridge that would be addressed by this particular spot concept. And especially if you look in the middle of this section, you'll see that there have been a number of injury crashes reported in that 2016 through 2019 time period with those yellow dots. So this would help improve safety along that stretch of roadway. So that concludes our discussion of, of conceptual improvements. Again, we, we really need your input. Uh, that's why we're here tonight. And that's why we, we are putting so much information out on the project on the study website. Your input is critical to the success of this study. This is your plan. So we need your input before any recommendations or any decisions can be made. Over the coming weeks, that's gonna be what our focus is, is collecting that input. We'll come back together as a study team. We'll take all that into consideration and make some recommendations and ultimately compile that into a draft report and a final report that will be made available to the public later this year. So once that's out, we'll have some press releases out to announce it so you can have access. to it. That concludes our, our presentation. And again, uh, for those of you attending in person this evening, we're gonna go back to the open house format now. Uh, for those of you attending virtually, if you've got any questions, please, please use that info at justfacestudy.com website and we'll, or that email address, and we'll try to address any questions you may have. Uh, if, if you're at the in-house meeting, uh, please fill out that survey and please leave it at the sign-in table as you're leaving this evening. And once again, on behalf of the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet and the Lexington Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, I appreciate your attendance and I appreciate your attention. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day.